Hello and welcome. My last Risk of Rain 2 video seemed to do really well relative to the rest of my channel, so I figured I'd make a follow-up. While I was editing the video together, I realized a certain very important mechanic came up quite a bit, and it occurred to me that many new players might not know exactly what I'm talking about, so I'm going to go through and explain it as best I can today. If you're paying close attention to that video, you probably heard the terms proc coefficient or proc chains come up quite a bit, but what exactly is a proc coefficient? Well, at the very base level, proc coefficients are what determine the frequency of your item procs. Every damage dealing thing in the game has a proc coefficient, excluding DOTs. Now you might be thinking, wait, what about items like the sticky bomb that can't proc your items? Well, an item or ability's proc coefficient ranges anywhere from 0.0, .0 to 1.0, with 0.0, .0 meaning it will never proc an item or effect, and 1.0 meaning it will proc an item or effect to its full effect. Now, that doesn't mean that something with a 1.0 proc coefficient will always proc something, rather that means it will proc it at its maximum rate. So let's take a simple example like an ATG missile launcher. The logbook states that the ATG has a 10% chance to proc. What that actually means is if something has a 1.0 proc coefficient, it has a 10% chance to trigger the ATG. Now let's look at the razor wire for example. The razor wire has a 0.5 proc coefficient, so hits from your razor wire have a 5% chance to trigger the ATG. Effectively, the chance something has to trigger is multiplied by the proc coefficient of the hit triggering it. So a sticky bomb exploding has a 0.0, .0 proc coefficient, which means it has a 0% chance to trigger the ATG. Does that make sense? Now, this isn't actually the only thing a proc coefficient does, but it is definitely the main effect it has. Many items only have their chance to trigger affected by a proc coefficient, but on some items it extends to other effects. On the tri-tip dagger, for example, not only is the chance to trigger the bleed affected by the proc coefficient, the duration of the bleed is also affected. So, at base, the tri-tip does 4 ticks of damage per second for 3 seconds for each stack. That will be the case if it is triggered by something with a 1.0 proc coefficient. Now let's take the razor wire again. The razor wire not only triggers the bleed at half the normal rate due to the 0.5 proc coefficient, but the bleed itself also only lasts half the time. So you get 4 ticks per second for 1.5 seconds. Other items that are affected differently by proc coefficient are the duration of the Predatory Instincts buff, the amount of healing you get from the Harvester Scythe and Leeching Seed, the explosion radius of the Brilliant Behemoth, and the duration of the debuffs from the Shattering Justice and all the Elite aspects, including the Elite buffs from the Wake of Vultures. It's not a very large amount of items, but it's helpful to keep in mind. So, keeping all that in mind, what exactly are proc chains then? Well, a proc chain is essentially when your items proc your other items. So let's keep it simple to start. Let's say you have an ATG and a ukulele, and you're fighting four enemies. You attack one, and it triggers your ATG, and that ATG triggers a ukulele. For simplicity's sake, let's say your base attack deals 100% damage. Therefore, your ATG hits that first enemy for 300% damage, and the ukulele would deal 80% of that damage, which would be 240% damage to the three other enemies. Now, unless you're fighting some particularly tanky enemies, there's a good chance that just wiped all four of them. And even if it doesn't, that's still a solid chunk of damage. And that's just with two items. We can make this even more ridiculous. So now, let's say you have a capacitor, an ATG, a ukulele, a sentient meat hook, and both Renald's band and Kiara's band. Now, in a normal run, it's very unlikely you'd have exactly one of each of these, but let's just go with one for simplicity's sake. So, you're fighting an absolutely massive horde of enemies for whatever reason. So you strike one with your capacitor, so you hit it for 3000% damage. Now, that capacitor hit procs your ATG, so your ATG hits one of those enemies for 9000% damage. Now that ATG hit procs your meat hook, which hits 10 enemies for 100% of that damage, which is 9000% again. Now those meat hook hits all proc your ukulele, which would hit 30 enemies for 80% of that damage, which is 7200% damage. Now those ukulele hits all proc your bands, which collectively deal 750% of that damage, which is 54,000% damage. So now you've done at least 54,000% damage to at least 30 enemies. Now, obviously, this is a very extreme scenario that would require some very extreme luck. 
but hopefully it gives you an idea of how strong proc chains can be. Keep in mind, even if this exact chain only triggers once per item instead of on all hits, you're still dealing 9000% damage to 11 enemies, 7200% to another 3, and 54,000% to one really unlucky monster. The bundle of fireworks, the ATG missile launcher, the razor wire, the ukulele, the will o' the wisp, the ceremonial daggers, the frost relic, the Nukahana's opinion, the resonance disc, the meat hook, the unstable tesla coil, the genesis loop, the little disciple, the disposable missile launcher, the prion accumulator, the royal capacitor, the volcanic egg, the visions of heresy, the crowd funder, and the glowing meteorite can all proc your other items, can, can each start a proc chain at any moment. Although I still wouldn't recommend using those last two. One last thing to keep in mind, any specific item cannot trigger twice in one proc chain. So, in that last scenario, after that first ATG hit triggers that ridiculous proc chain, none of those item procs that stem from that initial ATG hit can trigger the ATG again. So, there's your crash course in proc coefficients and proc chains. I'll put up the proc coefficients for every survivor's abilities and all the items that have one now so you can see. Hopefully now, if you're a newer player, you can see why items that can proc and be proc by your other items were ranked so highly. The further and further your run goes, the more and more of your damage is going to be made up by proc chains. I didn't even mention the difference a single clover would make in your proc chains. Loud of mercy. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. I probably have a few newer viewers from the items video because apparently 82% of the people that watched that one weren't subscribed. So if you're coming from that video, Welcome, I hope you enjoy your stay. Please let me know if you all would like another quick guide like this, because this game has got plenty of stuff to talk about, and I've really enjoyed making these videos so far. For now, I hope everyone is staying safe, and I will see you all in another video.